Hello everyone! Um, in today's video we are going to cover testing of web forms. What is actually a web form? Web form is an HTML form on a web page that is used as a way of communication between the user and the application. What the user does? User submits some data and that data is sent to the server for further processing when we click on submit. There are multiple types of web forms. For example, login forms, registration forms, um, contact us forms, survey forms, etc. We are going to try to cover as many things as possible that should be checked when talking about testing web forms. Uh, we're going to use two live web applications, Sephora and one more. So what should be checked? First let's try to open one. We're going to use here a web form for creating an account on this site. So, of course, uh, one of the first things you should see um, are all labels on their appropriate places and are they fully understandable and readable or visible. So, there's no doubt that in this field I have to put in my first name, my last name, my email address, my password, which should be from 6 to 12 characters, which is odd in some kind of way because uh, users aren't usually restricted to choose up to some amount, some, some number of characters. It's, it is usually suggested to be uh, more complicated, complex, combination of uh, characters, uppercase, lowercase, uh, numbers, and, and, and so on. But here it's, it's kind of weird, so you have to pick up to 12 characters max. But at least user is completely aware what is uh, the password that he can create, so he will be able to successfully join on this website to create an account. Then the phone number, here it says enter your birthday to receive a free gift every year. Okay, so here it is perfectly clear why am I giving my birthday here and for what purpose. And here I have month, the day, a year is not important so that's why it's not in here. And there is a zip code and of course there he explains there they explain to the user why do they need the zip code but in case you want to hear something about the store events near you and you have this kind of checkbox and a button join now and all kinds of links so we have gone through this uh, form and which is now uh, nowadays it's popular to put the forms inside of this uh, instead of this like pop-ups uh, models exactly uh, so you're gonna see here everything is in model over model it's not like on the on the separate page but it's it's inside of the model so when it's inside of a model you have to check like, is this scrollable? Can I see each part of this model? If it's larger, if it doesn't really, if the whole, this dimension is not fitting in the, into the size of the screen. That's one more thing when, when we're talking about this uh, uh, web forms that are inside of model and not inside of the page. Of course, if it was inside of the page, you would also have to see if it's a larger, if it doesn't fit on one page is it scrollable but that's another story so 
what have we learned here? We said, okay, first check the labels. Are they readable? So, of course, is it written correctly? Is some missing letter or something? So, grammarly correct. Uh, and the way the customer wanted us to make this uh, make this look like. Okay, so labels. That's one thing. Um, next thing, and that's one of the first things that you should check when talking about the forms, is uh, required and optional fields. Uh, there's some uh, kind of combinations what can be used in order to uh, differ the required field from uh, optional field. And that is, this is one type of, of the way, shall we say, and that's where the required fields are not marked at all, but the optional fields are marked with this optional. So where, whenever wherever we don't have the optional, it means that, that, that they are required. And for example, on this other web page that we're gonna uh, try to use, uh, is marked with this little star, asterisk. Um, and you can see this one is required, this one isn't, this one isn't, and stuff, etc. So, kind of, these are the two ways that can be uh, used. So, that's why you should take the requirements and see, okay, which fields should be required, and then check one by one, are all the required fields marked as required or not. Okay, uh, last see what else. Uh, let's try to see then what happens if a user submits an empty form. So I don't write anything, I don't select anything, I just click on join now. So in that case all the required fields should have some kind of a validation message above or under whatever is by design and here we have even additional like mark this is this is like you know really required and you see that for this optional field there's no such message and that is really important because uh, as much as this message is important to be shown that much that message it should not be shown under the optional field. That's one thing. So, and, and here you can, of course, when you click on this, for example, in this in this situation, and when you click join now, or you should check uh, what are the validation messages that are uh, under it. Are they by design, and do they make any sense? So, first name required. Maybe some by some by some mistake. Uh, it can state like last name is required under the first name field or, or email is required please fill in blah blah and you see it under the first name that would be a bug of course okay uh, now when we're having uh, when we're having like email address now we see the validation for not filling in the required field but do we have any kind of validation uh, for the email address. We know that email addresses should be in some kind of a uh, stated format that is correct, it looks like something. So um, you can have a case when the requirement is that the email address should be in some kind of a uh, correct format and the other thing that could be demanded from you to develop I mean, not from you as a tester, but from your team to develop as a requirement, is that you should make some checks that that email address that is entered is kind of existing, valid, used somewhere. That Those are two types of checks that could be uh, done over the email address. And... Um, Let's say we try to see uh, about that validation for the format. I'm going to try to type anything and see. 
Okay, so first of all, it raised me a message for the required field when I started typing in. We're going to see it again. So join now, you see? Please enter. When I started typing the first letter, it just disappeared, and that's okay, but my validation, validation for this field is not shown until I say join now. And it kind of is a rule that whenever you leave this field that you were editing, that you should trigger. So when you leave this field, you move to another field or you just move your focus out of it. it the, it, the focus is not in any of this field. It's just out of any fields, but you were there and you just move it it will say please enter an email address in the format this so what I was trying to say is um, this is really not convenient so if you go uh, if you go away from this model it just um, if you click here like it disappears and you entered so many data already <laughs> but okay that was a requirement right um, so what I was trying to say is so uh, whenever you uh, edit any field and when you move the focus out of it like try or or move it here or go in some other there is a there is a rule that the validation should be triggered but we cannot say that it is a bug right now because we don't know the requirements. It could be that it wasn't required that the validation triggers right away or while editing like this. But if it was a requirement, then this is a bug. So we have the validations uh, because it, it checked it and it said that email address should be in the other format. And if we say like some, like do, huh? it won't say anything about because it is in some kind of a correct format. It's not like something like this. Email cannot start with this. It will say again, okay, this is not the correct format. Please, please put it in this format. So that's one of the things that you check. When it comes to emails, uh, then form uh, for phone number, that is a really tricky thing. Especially when you don't have when you don't have this thing like you have in on this application like let's see I think I've seen it somewhere here it is phone number when you have this numbers when you have the, this predefined based on the uh, country with that uh, you can do checks that are more precise like okay for the United Kingdom uh, I cannot type whatever I want so it says please ensure a valid phone number is entered for this country so you cannot select this country and make a combination of numbers like uh, how many numbers can I put in after this 44 it cannot be more than it is in United Kingdom so those kind of validations so I cannot put the phone from United I cannot uh, put the phone that is looking like or in a format from the other country if I selected this country so those kind of validations are also uh, good to be checked if they exist and are they working correctly so how would you do how would you actually check this so well you will google it of course or if you have it from some other source, which is the correct format for the phone number for the certain country, and you would try to make those combinations, you would try to in, uh, put some correct number format to see if there are no mistakes, and some incorrect to see if there are 
mistakes, not actually mistakes, but this validation messages. And when you're seeing here, well, there's nothing actually here. So we have just a, a limit of this of number of fields. So it could be that it's uh, like limited to to some country, maybe country that this website is from, shall we say? Like, I don't know, from UK again, if this is from UK again, you can get the max number of field of numbers which is regulated for the UK. Okay, uh, that will be for the phone numbers. Um, also, one of the things that we have seen here, that's the character limits. So, how many characters is allowed? Here, so not more than this. Okay. Shall we see for the last name? Is it the same? Yes, it's exactly the same. I didn't count it, but there is a restriction for the max number of characters. I assume that it is the same story for this. Yeah, this is the max. It's like twice more than for these fields. Um, so passwords, like from, from 6 to 12 characters. If I say 5, will it say anything to me? Not right now, but if I say join, it will say please enter a password between 6 and 12 characters with no spaces. So do you know what you should check here? So you can try, like if you heard for boundary va uh, value analysis, so you should just pick pick uh, numbers from the boundaries. Like if it's from six to 12, you're gonna try a number five. So one, two, three, four, five, and it should give you a message yes then you should try six that's the first number uh, for characters that should not be uh, displayed uh, a message error message that's correct the six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve Twelve is a max, so it's still not presenting any uh, message, and that's good. Now the first number that crosses the line, so thirteen characters, it then again puts you this validation message, and that is good. Uh, when we're uh, talking about passwords, when we're talking about passwords, um, you should uh, check that by default this. This I is like crossed, so you don't see this uh, password that you're typing in. So in case some somebody of yours is standing right behind you, so actually for security reasons, uh, so unless you select the, to see this, you should not be able to see it. It should be like masked in, in this uh, little stars. And that's uh, for the password. Um, what else? Zip code, of course, you should check for the formats. And um, uh, of course, uh, you should always check in all browsers. How does it look like? Because UI can be crashed in different uh, browsers like Firefox or Safari. Um, and of course, you should check if when you submit this correctly, we're not going to do it right now. If you uh, submit this correctly, uh, is the proper like uh, uh, message toast toast message displayed if it's required, or some email sent is it sent on the correct email address and stuff like that. Uh, you should also check the the network uh, request, like what is sent, what kind of payload on on which endpoint. And what is retrieved? Is it connected properly, like mapped to these fields? And um, 
you should also check for the uh, SQL injection. Um, this is just, we're just mentioning it. Like, uh, what you should do, you should try to type in an SQL query in the, in the field, and that would try to retrieve the data that should not be visible to you in regular cases. Um, it is usually written in a way that the stated condition is always true, like, uh, I don't know, the condition is where username is Mike or 1 equals 1. Because of that, 1 equals 1 is always true. It's going to show you uh, all, all the records from the database that you shouldn't be allowed to see. And um, one more thing that I wanted to mention, and it's in this other, uh, it's really important, uh, we haven't showed it until now, is this uh, uploading a file. So uh, what you should tra uh, try to see for this uploading is different kind of uh, extensions like pictures and the name of the file that is uploaded and uh, trying to remove it. Then drag and drop. That is working also. Uh, trying to drag and drop another while one this already is open and we can see this is not really working well. It's opening the other one. And one of the things that is that might not be good is that where whatever I click here, not, not just on this uh, sign, it will remove it. So we should be careful what is the area of, let's say, clickability for this action of removal. And of course, there should be some kind of uh, restrictions for the file size, so for the type of size, and I suppose it should be more uh, uh, more information for the user, which what is allowed and what is not, what is the max size, so he wouldn't just randomly try to uh, put in something and to see, oh, this format is not supported, so I tried try with something else. So uh, that's basically it. We tried so many things. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And of course, as always, uh, like.